All right, good morning. Uh, thank you for being here. It's great to be with you. Um, you know, there, there are lots of steps on, on our spiritual path. Uh, and it certainly seems like some steps take us forward, but then there are those other steps where we seem to go backwards. But even a backward step is beneficial if we have any awareness, because one of the things we say in the science of mind is that awareness is curative. You know, so a step is like a stage in a process. It's just usually a short distance, right? You know, there are lots of steps in the unfoldment of our own spiritual conscious, it seems, consciousness, it seems to me. And I think our spiritual growth is, in fact, a process. Our spiritual growth is never a stagnant kind of thing. I believe that most of these steps are happening for all of us all the time. I think uh, the short distances, uh, even those, seem to happen incrementally to me. You know, most of the time, consciousness expands incrementally. We talk about this, that we don't totally change our thinking just from one treatment or one uh, moment where we sit down with the practitioner and pray. It doesn't usually change everything. Now, sometimes it can. It's certainly possible if we have that level of faith. But at least speaking for myself, my faith is that things usually happen in steps, lots and lots of steps. So. Um, I, how many of you have ever quit smoking or any other habit? Yeah, I haven't done that, you know. And did it always happen perfectly on your first try? No, not so much, maybe. You know, uh, not, maybe not for many of us. So what about when we're trying to add something to our life, like I'm going to walk every day or I'm going to meditate every day. I'm going to tithe. I'm going I'm to eat a salad every day, you know. I'm really good with that until I see that fried whatever go by. You know, uh, so it didn't just flow for most of us after the first attempt, probably not for most people. So there are these uh, two good old boys watching a movie, and one of them says to the other, I bet you $50 the cowboy steps off the cliff. And the other one says, all right, you're on, you're on. And so sure enough, they continue watching the movie, and the cowboy steps off the cliff. And so the one who initiated this says, I feel bad about taking your money from you. I've seen this movie before. And the other one says, so have I. But I didn't think he was stupid enough to do it again. <laughs> you know? so, um, so when I think of steps, I, think, I often think of, uh, of dances. You know, that when you dance, sometimes you dance in many different directions. You know? I particularly like to watch older couples who've been together for a long time and watch them dance because it's this whole uh, experience of intuition. You know, they just know each other's moves and it's very graceful and it might be a style that's all completely, completely their own. But to see that, that intuition exchange between them is, is really, really beautiful to me. Um, and I think that while they're doing that, they're having fun with whatever the steps are. See, but if we appear to take a step and and sometimes we're very hard on ourselves when, in fact, this, it, it looks, it seems to us like, oh, that was a step back. But maybe, maybe that's the preparation we need to be able to take a step forward. You know, I don't know if you, when you were a kid, I know this is probably not a popular thing now, but we always had slingshots that we were forever getting in trouble with, you know. I mean, because I don't know why, but, you know, if you have a slingshot, a window looks like a perfect target when you're a kid, right? And so with a slingshot, if you remember, you know, it's kind of shaped like this, then there's a big rubber band and you pull back, right? So we could say that pulling back on the slingshot is like stepping, like when we say, oh, I, I stepped, I fell back, I backslid. But you pull back to be able to fly forward, right? That's what it does. So sometimes, you know, we have to get to the place of feeling bad before we're willing to really do something to feel good. Anybody ever been there? Yep, been there, done that, yep. Okay. Sometimes we're a little unconscious, okay, a lot unconscious, before we become more conscious. You know, I will even add that sometimes we're a little bit unloving before we have the awareness within us that, oh my God, I have to make a greater effort on a daily basis, on an interaction by interaction basis, to be more loving. Sometimes we get sick and tired a lot before we get tired of being sick and tired. Right? But I think it's also important to remember how far we each have come. Because I think this keeps us on the path. That yes, I understand for every person here, we probably all have a long ways we want to go. We're not nearly where we want to be yet. But, but when, you know, when, when you climb many steps, there are landings between flights often. And this gives us a moment 
to sort of pause and reflect, to take in what we've accomplished and get perspective on where we're going. Um, I don't know if you've ever done this or not. Have you ever gone to the, the top of the Statue of Liberty uh, in New York? I remember the story of a woman who was, um, oh, I don't know, in her 80s or 90s, who wanted to climb to the top of the Statue of Liberty. And it was really, really important to her. And her daughter was completely, her adult daughter was completely against this. And, and she said, no, 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 if I'm going to do it. And if you're not going to do it with me, I'm going to do it alone. And so finally they set out really early one day. And it took them most of the day. They would have to go a few steps, and then they'd pause. And a few steps, and pause. And a few more steps, and pause. And this older woman was clutching her heart medication in her hand the entire time. People were passing them all the way to the top. And so when she got close to the top, she said, why couldn't these steps have been first? I thought that was a great approach. You know? so, so she got there. She got there, and it was really, really a significant thing to her because her parents had come through Ellis Island years ago, and so for her, this was sort of the fulfillment of something. You know, so imagine, imagine how she felt seeing the spot where her parents had come from. You know, she could even imagine the direction the ship came in and all that. And was she glad she took the steps that were necessary? You bet. Absolutely. She was really glad to have done this. And so I think the steps we climb are for the purpose of, of rising up, rising to a higher place in consciousness, rising to a better experience of being the person we say we want to be. What we're doing is like this woman. We're climbing for a better view. And it's a step to learn to make a demand on the universe, to learn to use spiritual law for a greater good. And I know some people think that's not very spiritual. You know, but what's not spiritual about a greater good? God is life, and life is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself, especially if that good harms no one else. So there's nothing particularly spiritual about lack. We just had our abundance workshop, and we talked about this a lot that there's so much thinking in, in the collective consciousness, in the, what Ernest calls the race consciousness, that somehow lack or struggle or poverty or going without somehow makes you more spiritual. Like, oh, you must be really spiritual. You can't pay your rent. You know, and it's like, no, that's not it. One does not necessarily imply the other. You know, unless you are consciously choosing that as your path, which I understand some people do, you know, but then, 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 yes, certainly that could be um, your way, right? But let's not kid ourselves either. If we are struggling, our ego could be using lack to tell us that we are closer to God. And so I would just invite you to check in with that. And we say, well, what's the next step? You know, the, the, the next step, we're, again, from the Abundance Workshop, we talked about doing the next right thing. You don't need to know the whole journey. You just need to know what's the next right thing for me to do. One step. What's the next right thing? And so we work in science of mind all the time to stabilize the different structures of our life. You know, that we, we, uh, and so up until that point, until these outer air, until we sort of get pretty good with our health and with relationships and our creative expression and with our money, until those things sort of get balanced out for us, we're actually just in the lobby, you know, of the Statue of Liberty. We, we have a long way to go to rise, to rise up. Uh, in the Jewish teaching of Kabbalah, Kabbalah is Jewish mysticism, it says that awareness, awareness is the purest form of light, and all of creation is a vessel. The shape and strength of the vessel determines how much light it can hold. So that's us. We're the vessel, and the shape and strength of us as a vessel determines how much light we can hold. Right? And so we stabilize the structures of health and supply and love, and we mend and repair our relationships and our body and our emotions. And all of this is how we contribute to the vessel being stronger and greater to hold more light. So this is why we even pay attention to these things. This is why we have to consider and think about, wow, that's right. I'm a vessel. I'm a vessel for the light of God to express here on earth. And I think it's a step to know. It is a step to know that we co-create our life with an intelligent use of divine law. Yeah. So we get the vessel together. You know, We sort of, OK, and stabilize the structures so the greater light of awareness can fill us. Now, it seems to me that the problems we encounter can make us go deeper within for the answer. 
Obviously, that's what we're supposed to do. And hopefully, we will go within for the answer, right? Because you know, the saying is, if you don't go within, you'll go without. And so often, we go within first, you know, getting, uh, when we don't go within first, we get lots of opinion from the world out here. Um, and so it is a step to know and trust that the answer and the direction is already within us. So often, what the next right thing, just do the next right thing is, is the next right thing is I just need to close my eyes and shut my mouth and go within for a few minutes because something within me, what is that something? It's the presence of spirit, it's the presence of God, it's the higher mind already knows everything that I need to know and do. You know, because there's no place where God leaves off and we begin. And in spite of the appearances, the law, the law of God is always in operation. You know, there is, there is a power, there's the power that we have in the world to say, no, I choose not to accept these thoughts. I, I, I want to think greater thoughts. I want to think, um, uh, what is it, Einstein said, I want to think God's thoughts, all the rest are just details. You know, that I want, to, I want my mind to be filled with, with divine thoughts. Because the outer activity is merely a reflection of my inner state of consciousness. We teach that. I know that that is very hard. You know, that's why I say science of mind is not just a feel-good teaching. If you're working on yourself, you are not always going to feel good. I was talking with somebody the other day, and we were saying that growth is often messy. How many of us know that? Growth is messy. When you are on the grow, it is going to make a mess a lot of the time. And all that is is that there are these little dark spots in our consciousness that must be brought to the light for healing and release. You know, we don't want to be like Woody Allen who said, my only regret in life is that I'm not somebody else. <laughs> right? Because if you want to be somebody else, then you don't like what's inside of you. You know, it's that idea that I've talked about, that when you get squeezed by life, by some situation, traffic, or you're in a long line, or the person that you're dealing with is not understanding you, or you have some particular upset or physical episode, you get what is inside. You know? So, so if you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. You squeeze a lemon, you get lemon juice. What comes out when you get squeezed? You know, hopefully for all of us, what comes out is some of the highest and the best within us. The love, the compassion, the understanding. You know, science of mind says it is there because somehow my thinking contributed to it. Somehow it is part of my soul's evolution. There is growth in this for me. This did not just happen. Now that's a step to recognize, okay, this is here for my greatest good. I understand. I get it. When we are in the midst of something, it does not look like it is for our greatest good. But down the road, down the road, we can get the gift out of it. So being aware of the kind of person we are being, I think, is a huge step. You know, we're not glibly saying, oh, there's just one power, God is all there is. We have to rise to that state of consciousness and recognize and believe and see that there really is only one power in many, many expressions. You know, we now know that God constitutes our being and, appears, uh, and appearances to the contrary are what we would call an illusion, right? So God is the truth about each of us and anything not that is an illusion. So we see it as an illusion, and we take steps to be able to walk through it. This will then outpicture in our life as better conditions, better experiences, better relationships, better work, better health. Who doesn't want that? You know, it's like the song says that they will, we'll be building a stairway to paradise with a new step every day. You know, we say, it, or it's easy to see how we could say how uh, oh, other people are believing in the illusion. Other people are believing in the effects. Well, realize we allow other people to have the effect they have on us as well, you know? So, so a way to consider this is what other people do, that's all about their karma. How we respond is our karma, you know? So I hope that the love, ins I hope that love is inside of all of us, you know? I believe it is, you know? That when we're squeezed, love is in fact what comes out. Because this is what science of mind is really all about. They say that they asked Ernest Holmes near the end of his career, Ernest is the founder of our church, you know, if he had it to do over again, what would he do differently? And he said that he would focus more on the love than the law. That he said he knew that people eventually would understand that there's spiritual law operating, but what the world really, really needed was more of the love. 
Now, I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think that it's probably as true now as it's ever been. And I'm sure every generation in history has been able to say that. You know? So do I want spiritual growth and healing, or do I want agreement and approval from the world around me? Will I allow what other people to think of me and my path to be more important than what I think of me? All right? So we have to, to stop giving externals, and that's people or situations, the power over us. You know, the world out here, Science of Mind teaches us, is a mirror. Right? That people just reflect back to us our own level of doubt. So healing then happens from the uplifted thought and the receptivity to greater spiritual truth. We have opened our consciousness to the divine reality that has always existed, but we weren't ready to take the necessary steps prior to this time. Remember, right now is the most conscious, the most awake, the most spiritually evolved you have ever, ever, ever been. So a duck goes into an employment office. Yeah. And, uh, and the employment person says, you can talk. And the duck says, well, of course I can talk. Can you find me a job? And they say, well, yeah, we'll, we'll look. Could you come back tomorrow? And so the employment person calls a friend at a circus and says, I've got a duck who can talk. And the circus guy says, well, we'll give him $1,000 a week for one show a day. The next day, the duck returns to the employment office. The employer says, have I got a job for you, $1,000 a week for one show a day at the circus? And the duck looks at him and says, what? Are you crazy? What kind of a job is that? I'm an engineer. <laughs> okay, right, right, so. right now, we have everything we need to have a wonderful life. Really, really, we were coded that way. We have everything we need to have a wonderful life. and so. Just ask yourself, for me today, what's the next right thing? Just the next right thing. Don't go a 1,000 miles down the road. Just what's the next right thing for me to do, the next step? Mm -hmm. It might be, I've got to meditate. It might be, just take a moment and feel the presence of God flowing through me. It might be, mm, before you say another word, get to a loving place in my consciousness. Let's do that now when we pray. So we thank you. So we turn our attention inward for a moment to just recognize that we are indeed surrounded and filled with God's infinite, loving, intelligent spirit. That that presence of God's spirit within us is the most true, most real thing about each and every one of us. We are emanations of the Most High God. And so in this awareness, I claim for each and every one of us that yes, absolutely, our spiritual unfoldment in this life is a journey. And we take it one step at a time, patiently, lovingly, consciously, with our awareness expanding every time we take a step. And so we ask ourselves, what's the next right thing for me to do? And we're open to the impulse of that divine spirit within us, to God revealing to us just the next right thing. And I know for each and every one of us, it's easy to move forward with that. It's easy for us to follow. And so we include in our prayer today our family members and friends and loved ones. We know that wherever they are, God is surrounding them, filling them, expressing through them in perfect ways. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world in which we live. And because the God we believe in is big enough to encompass all of it, we know that all people everywhere, all situations are touched by this prayer. That our prayer adds light and love and healing to wherever it's called for in the world around us. We bless our church. We bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today in consciousness, that there is raising up, that there is healing for each and every one. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is so. I release this word. Together we all say, Amen.